apologize for the echo. This was as good as I could get my sound card to work. I quickly want to cover, um, as fast as they'll let me, a GSLB video since I didn't see one on here yet. Um, they want us to get these done quick, so um, I'm going to go a little bit fast. So I'm going to figuratively, we're going to pretend here that we've got a northeast site and a southwest site, and we want to deliver the Citrix merchandising server. So real quickly, we'll show um, I have a VIP at both locations. Here we've got one at the southeast. We're going to call the 100 one, uh, the, I'm sorry, the southwest, and the 200 one, the northeast. And the first thing you want to do when you set up GSLB <laughs> is make sure that it's turned on. I've actually spent a lot of time troubleshooting something when GSLB wasn't even turned on. So the first order of business is to create GSLB sites. And GSLB sites monitor one another and then services live within those sites. So let's create our first sites here on what we're going to call the Northeast Netscaler. And this is going to be local. And I'm going to enter in the GSLP, GSLB IP address, which I'll cover here in a second. And then we'll add the southwest region. And that is 105. Oh, oh yep, I know what I did here. Hold on. And we'll go ahead and add that. Actually, here. You can save yourself a little bit of typing if you highlight an existing site and click Add. Then we have the Southwest site, and the reason that failed was that I said it was a local site. We're actually going to add the remote site, because what the two Netscalers are going to do is they're going to monitor each other. So you need to instantiate the GSLBs of both Netscalers, in fact all the Netscalers involved in your global server load balancing. Now obviously this is showing up as down, and here's your GSLB IP address right here. So it is different than the, uh, the mapped IP and the virtual IPs. And if you want to add one of these, it's simple. Um, oh, no, I can't do that. Um, you basically um, add, and you just select that radio button, and that will be your GSLB. IP address. And that's the IP address that the Netscalers use to communicate with one another um, over 3011 TCP um, to make sure that one another's sites are open. So we've configured the sites. So let's now configure the services. And we covered earlier that there is a VIP at both locations. So here, oh, I mean, okay, let me fix that. For the price of a live demo, I made a naming mistake here. I'll have to think of a name here. And here, since this is a local one, I can choose the VIP right there. And the, again, the VIP is lives on this Netscaler. So the first VIP, first VIP, obviously because it's local, shows up as up. If you look here, I'll show you the second VIP. So that one was 10, 10, 10, 2, 10, and this VIP is 10, 10, 10, 1, 10. So I'm going to go ahead and add this service. Now again, the way services are determined as being up or down is by the Netscaler IP communications. So when I first add this, even though this service is in fact up, it's not asking the service via its own VIP. It's asking it via the NSIP. So I'm going to go ahead and add this service. And if you, if I didn't have that in already, I would click that button there and add it. So I had a VIP or a service already um, in here for the Southwest. And this is slow more because of my um, split tunnel VPN than actual virtual CAG. If you look up the top there, you'll see Netscaler VPX. So here, if you click Refresh, again, we know the site's up, but we haven't configured the GSLB IP over at the southwest area, so it's going to show up as down. And you can see where the remote site is down. So let's go ahead and go over to the southwest Netscaler. 
and let's configure these sites and services. So the first one, and I'm going to do this one right, I'm going to name it site-gslb-northeast, and this one is the remote site. And this one, the remote site, was the 200, so 205. And then I will click my local one. And once I add this, you should start seeing some of these turn green. Let me refresh here. Okay, so now that there is a GSLB IP configured in both locations, they can see one another, and your services and your sites are going to start turning green. Again, I apologize for the speed. I just I want to keep this around 15 minutes so they'll accept it. So now I'll add the services. This will be SBC, and this is uh, the Northeast region. So this is remote. And since it's a remote one, I can't select a VIP. Luckily, I've added a service already as an SSL branch. Right. And the next one, we'll add the Southwest. And I'll select that site. So again, services live within sites, and those sites are used to com for communications to make sure that the NetScaler knows the other the remote service is up. And that looks good. We'll click Create. So now we have sites and services, and it always shows up as down when you first create it. We have sites and services in each location and everybody looks green. So the way GSLB works is that the NetScaler will actually function as a DNS server. So what we need to do um, is add the actual DNS name that we want. And here you can add a logical name. For this I'll have a, since it's a merchandising server, we're going to call it gslb-merch.citrix.lab and it is an SSL bridge. And I'm going to go ahead and check both of these guys. So both of these VIPs are being load balanced. So essentially we're load balancing the load balancers. And here I'm going to add the actual DNS name that I want. So here's where I'll add merc.citrix.lab. And I will create this and click close. come back over here to the northeast CAG and let's let's say it's in Boston and I'll configure the same thing here GSLB dash Merck dot Citrix dot lab and we are an SSL branch and I will check these two services again load balancing the load balancers um, and that's created and the next step is to create a DNS daemon what happens is the net scaler will actually have records or have queries forwarded to it for those GSLB records. And here you see you don't see the record here yet. Um, I still have to, a few steps left. I'm going to create a authoritative DNS service. So to do that, I'll name the service ADNS and I want to bind it to the mapped. Oh, the ADNS service is bound to the mapped IP. I'll show you that here. So the same IP that you use to traverse your network with, the mapped IP will also serve as the authoritative DNS server for the GSLB records that you have on your NetScaler. So I'll add the ADNS service, and if you remember that was the mapped IP was 201, and the service is ADNS, and you create it, and it will show up not in your regular service, but as an auto detect, and you see it there on port 53. So now I still have oh I still have one more check there. I don't think I added the box. Okay, I missed a step. I remembered it on the Southwest CAG. Right here I need to add my DNS. Again we have to add the DNS record. So I'll add and it's merc.citrix.lab. And now that this is added I can go back and and I should be able to uh, Oh, and I want to. Here is where any response to name queries, um, this will reply with, with the D 
DNS records. And let me refresh. And there is my GSLB A record for all intents and purposes that I have. So now that I've configured this, um, there is d a DNS server running on the Netscaler, but the Netscaler is not the incumbent DNS server for most, if not all, enterprises. So here I'm going to pretend that my incumbent DNS or corporate DNS is a bind server running on this Unix box. And I'm going to add a zone. And there are a lot of ways to do this. Um, I'm not a DNS guru, so um, this is how I'm doing it. But basically, what you'll usually what you'll do is ask your DNS team to provide a recursive lookup for a particular zone. So here I'm doing exactly that. I'm creating a forwarding zone. And like I said, there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, and you know, if there's a DNS admin that wants to add a comment of a better way, uh, please do. So here we have the zone of merc.citrix.lab. The type is forward, and in the forwarders, this is who we want to answer this query. We are going to put the mapped IP addresses of the two Netscalers where we have a, a DNS daemon listening. And now that I've added this, I will save it. And I'm going to do some NS lookups. So First, I'm going to make sure I'm using this as my. Yep, okay, I'm using this guy as my DNS server. So I'm going to do an NS lookup, merc.citrix.lab. And um, oh, I was expecting two. So I got one IP address back. Um, we'll go back to the net scanner and fix that. I was hoping to get both the same way if you type uh, Google. So you see it going back and forth between the two VIPs, uh, essentially doing kind of a round robin. So let me go back um, to this guy. Yep, that's what I did. And do you see that's 210? So the two VIPs are being uh, load balanced there through round robin. But what I want to do is show the failover. So let me go back here. And I believe I missed a step here. Yeah, so I need to check these. This says to send all active IPs back. So now when I go, and let me just double check here, make sure this says to send all, then I should get what you get with Google where you get a couple IP addresses back when you do an NS lookup. Um, you should, we should get um, 110 and 210 back respectively. So let me do a quick NS lookup. And there we go. And if you look here, you see you have two IP addresses. So we kind of got the same thing that the big enterprises have. In that, um, and if you see, they'll look there. They'll flip flop 110 and 210. Then here is 210 and 110. So now that we have that done, I want to test a failover. So I'm going to fail over, or I'm going to fail my northeast VIP. So with that, what I should get back, and if you look here, the Netscaler monitors itself. He says, hey, we're down. But more importantly, the one Netscaler that is up shows that he's down. So I should only be presenting one IP address when I do an NS lookup. And same as whether it's in here in an NS lookup or a user or a shopper in a browser. And if you look there, the only response back we got was the 110 address. So now if I come back here and I re enable this. I should get both of my IP addresses back. So let me come here. And there, we've got both of them back. So um, basically, we have shown that we can survive a, you know, if we lose a whole data center, let's say we lost the Northeast data center, we would still be up on the Southwest side. Um, so that's basically a, a quick overview of load balancing. Um, a quick housekeeping item. Um, this was not a routed network in the spirit of expediency uh, to get this lab done fast enough. We just put everybody on the same network. But I want to show you how we, a quick glance of how we set up the lab. I really want to thank Citrix for giving this um, virtual CAG out. This is a tremendous learning tool. 
and essentially I have one CAG that functions as a VPN, uh, which I'm logged into, and that's why I can't manage my Zen server. So what I've got is an internal network uh, that I've bound 10 addresses to, and those 10 addresses house that merchandising server, if you look at the network, that's internal, uh, meaning that it's just within the Zen server. It actually is not on my corporate network. We have an internal DNS server, and this is the gateway that's multi-homed that I VPN into that allows me to manage the keg. And here are the two kegs that I used to configure GSLB. So anyway, that's the lab. Again, I want to thank Citrix for giving us that virtual keg. And um, again, I apologize for going so fast. And I hope uh, GSLB isn't such a mystery. Thanks a lot.